On the bench today, I have an APC Model SMT 2200 UPS. I believe the same fix will also apply to other models in the series, such as the SMT 1500, 1000, and 750. The problem I'm experiencing is one I've had on several of the same model, where the batteries don't seem to completely charge. Updating the firmware, running self-tests, runtime calibrations, and updating the battery replacement date seem to have no effect. Other symptoms of the problem include the UPS reporting a failed battery, a failed self-test. If the batteries are replaced with new fully charged batteries, it may report a charger fault. And in some cases, even the automated self-test that runs every couple weeks will fail and drop the load. The core of the issue is that the battery calibration is not correct. As you can see on the display, it believes that the battery voltage is 54.8 volts. A voltmeter connected to the battery positive and chassis reports that it is only actually 48 volts. 48 volts is nearly dead for four 12 volt sealed lead acid batteries, so it's no surprise that this UPS will not run correctly. We'll bring up the computer in a moment here, and we can see the battery voltage and charge, and then we'll run a brief test to see how long it lasts as it sits today. Okay, I've got the UPS web management interface on the screen. You can see that it's showing 100% state of charge and that the battery voltage is at 54.8 volts. As a test load, I have a couple of incandescent light bulbs, a 150 plus a 60 watt. This is a very low load for this size UPS, but if the batteries are at least five years old and have been sitting in storage discharged for another six months. So I don't expect a whole lot out of them, even when they are fully charged. If I bring up our voltmeter, we can see that our actual battery voltage is still only 48 volts. So the first thing we're going to do is just disconnect power from the UPS and see how long it'll run for as is before we make a fix. Here we go. That's it. Lasted maybe half a second. So we'll, next step, we'll take the cover off and proceed with the fix. I've disconnected the unit from utility power, disconnected the battery, and removed the top cover. On the main board of the UPS, we see connector J606. This connector allows us access to the smart protocol, which can be used to reprogram the UPS. In older models, this was accessible with a serial port on the back of the UPS, but now is only accessible from the connector internally. In order to interface with this connector, we need to use a TTL serial to USB adapter. The connections we need to make are from, as it appears on the screen, the top left pin to the transmit, the top middle pin to the receive, and the bottom middle pin to the ground of our serial adapter. I'm connected to the J606 connector. I've just used some female header pins soldered to some wire. From there, we connect to our FTDI basic TTL to USB serial adapter, and from there we connect to PuTTY on the laptop. I have PuTTY running here on the laptop. It's connected at 2400 baud to the serial TTL to USB adapter. A meter is connected to the front terminal of the UPS between the positive and the chassis ground, but the battery is not currently connected. Effectively, we're only measuring the voltage at the terminals of the charger output of the UPS. I'll power on the UPS utility power. We get a question mark on our putty session, which is exactly what we expect to receive when we're properly connected to the smart connector. From here, we type a capital Y. This puts it into smart mode. Then we press 1, 1 again, and now we're in programming mode. It should be noted while we have this serial to USB adapter connected to the main board that the front panel will not work. Functionality will be restored once we disconnect. When we're in programming mode, capital B gives us the current battery voltage reading. If we compare that to our meter, 
the UPS believes that the battery voltage is 54.8, but the actual output voltage that it's trying to charge at is only 47.9 or 48. We use the plus and minus keys on the keyboard to make the adjustment. When I press minus, the output voltage will go up. Every time I press it, it goes up a little bit more. We need to get that voltage up to the 54.8 volts that it expects. So I'll just press it several more times here. We're up to about 52. Fifty-four. And one more. Fifty-four point nine. That's close to the fifty-four point eight that we had before. So we'll run with that. At this point, we will turn off the UPS power, reconnect the battery, and allow it to charge overnight. It's the next day. The UPS batteries have had over eight hours to charge. According to the web interface, our state of charge is 100% and battery voltage is 54.8. If we bring up our voltmeter, we can see that the actual battery voltage is also 54.8 and 54.9, which is much closer than it was last time when it was only 48. Battery manufacturers recommend a charge voltage of between 13.5 and 13.8 volts per battery. Much like last time, we will switch off supply power to the UPS, let it run, and we'll see how long it runs for. Doing that now. We're now on battery power. The UPS is running on battery. Battery voltage is beginning to drop. We'll be back when it completes. Our test run is complete. Looks like we got about 40 minutes of runtime on these old batteries, which, considering again the batteries are five years old and have sat in storage for another six months, is not bad. I call this fix successful, and this can go back in service with some new batteries.